It is six o'clock. I will call this meeting to order. First up is the Pledge of Allegiance. Item two, roll call, please. Brooks, Fish, Here. Hausman, Here. Jones, Here. McInerney, Here. Wells, Here. Mayor Beasley. Here. All right, we have a quorum to move on. Um, today's agenda, approval of the agenda, has before us, please. Second. Motion from Jones, second by Hausman, to approve the agenda. Questions or discussion? If not, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed? Item number four, approval of the minutes. November 2nd, briefing. November 6th, regular. And November 13th, special meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I have a motion from Hausman, second. Fish to approve the minutes of those three meetings. Discussion? If not, all in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Item five, claims. It, there's a question on the First Dakota title tower land for 56,686. That was for the purchase of the land from Excel Energy at the intersection of Six Mile Road and Holly. That purchase agreement was approved on May 15th, 2017. Okay, thank you. That was my notation right here. That's okay. Any, I, I had a motion. I did not know if I had a second. Sorry. Thank you. A motion and a second. Any other questions or discussion? Pardon? Motions and Jones and McInerney. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes. With that being said, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed. All right. On the consent calendar, it is a plat of lot 11, block 4, Brandon Park edition, and a plat of tract N, Traub's edition. I will entertain a motion in a second. Motion from Wells, second from Fish to approve the consent calendar. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. All right. Visitors and timed items. We have, first up, a public hearing to consider rezoning property described as Track 1, Rovang Industrial Park from NRC to Heavy Industrial. It's located at 300 Hemlock. This is the first reading of Ordinance 557. I would make a motion to approve that's coming from planning and zoning. Second. I have a motion from Fish, second from Jones to approve that rezone of the Rovang Industrial Park, Track 1, from NRC to Heavy Industrial. And this would be the first reading of Ordinance 557. Questions or discussion? Not all in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries there. Um, the next two, do we do them separately or can I? Can we combine them? Okay. We have a public hearing on the transfer of a package off-sale liquor license from the Brandon First Stop to Bauer Enterprises, LLC. And along with that would be a transfer of the retail on-off sale of malt beverages from Brandon First Stop to Bauer Enterprises, LLC. Is there anybody here to address that? <coughs> okay. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion from Jones, second from McInerney to approve those two transfers. Questions or discussion? Uh, the chief, is the chief here? Do we have no problems with them at all? Okay. 
Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, and our last visitors and timed item is a public hearing to renew all liquor licenses for 2018. Don't we have a couple that need to come in and visit with us? That's for beer. Huh? That's for beer. Malt beverage. Mm -hmm. This is our liquor licenses. Well, Brandon, Brandon yeah. Spirits. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. Oh, my mistake. I'm sorry. And he is here. You have to step up and push the, the mic. I'm sorry. You're right. My apologies. That's all right. <laughs> Just push the purple button on that. There you go. Just state your name. And... Oh, Dave Hansen. Okay. And then um, what happened that you lost it? I mean, you got... You were on a sting? Yeah. Okay. So can you explain what happened? Uh, I can't really. Uh, the gentleman that was working that evening did card. Hey, Dave, you shut the mic up. I said, I'm sorry. There you go. Okay. The gentleman that was working that evening did card the person, but still sold to him anyway. He doesn't really have a good explanation for that. So I can't really uh, tell you exactly why. I think just... Uh, not paying attention, just going through the motions, wasn't taking it seriously. He had gone through Tam's training, though, correct? He had not gone through Tam's training, no. Okay. He has he since? I believe he has now, yeah. Okay. Is he currently employed? Yes. Um, thank you for coming up. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the list. I'll second. I have a motion from McInerney, second from Wells to approve the list. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Thank you. Item 8, second reading of Ordinance 556, rezone property described as lots 1 and 2, block 1, Heartland Business Park. Oh, I'm sorry, other visitors and time and items. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, City Council, Tim Wakefield, 2821. Uh, when I make a mistake, I stand up and I say it. Uh, Mr. Jones, I know you've been very active on uh, saying that uh, mistakes are made and facts are not true on Brandon Askintel. Uh, earlier today, uh, or last night, I said that there was a item on the claims for a water tower purchase. Uh, I misspoke, and I have specifically stated that it probably was the land on the east side of town. I am owning up to that mistake. I caught it earlier this afternoon and I did correct that statement and say that there was a possibility it was the other land on the west side of town. I have no problem standing up for that mistake and I do ask your forgiveness for that mistake. Now, furthermore, I'd like to say I'm disappointed that today on the agenda it's commented on social media, but there is not a line item on the agenda for any results from the water committee. I know that this is a very important topic and I know that a lot of residents are watching this. Unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, I've become the point man for this project, just as you have become the point men and women of our community. There's a lot of individuals that have reached out to me, I've had coffee with them, all those sort of things, and I've got a lot on my shoulders, I know how you feel and I hope you respect that as well. Um, I'm not in a position that I can make decisions. And I'm not asking you to make decisions, let me make decisions. But what I would like to do is make sure that we are being able to take the time to let the community, community go through in the committee that was formed to make decisions before we move forward with any further spending. I've asked this multiple times and we've had commitment from the mayor. I'm not on the agenda. This is not anything that you can vote on, and I appreciate that. But I'd like to continue to have the transparency that we would like to see, and we'd like to slow down this process. We've gone through, we've set it up um, with the committee, which is much appreciated. But again, we'd like to try to avoid any purchases. In this case, with the water tower land, I'm assuming we have to close by a certain date. Um, and uh, obviously, we have to make that spend. So it is what it is. but. I know that the land on the east side of town does not need to close until March 1st. Uh, there shouldn't be any rush to do that. Um, it's your decision in the end, but uh, 
I know that's what uh, a lot of the residents have reached out to me. So again, my uh, utmost apologies for um, leading anyone to believe that it was specifically that land on the east side of town. I caught my mistake and uh, I'll be here in front of you all publicly on a microphone saying that. So thank you. Thank you. If I can just clarify for the council, um, currently the purchase agreement for the Nelson property pursuant to the purchase agreement would need to close by December 15th under the second amended agreement. The council had approved a third amended purchase agreement that had not yet been signed uh, by Mr. Nelson that may or may not be signed by Mr. Nelson. If it's, you, you've already authorized it, so if he chooses to sign it, he can sign it and extend it to March 15th. Otherwise, uh, the closing needs to be done by December 15th, which is 15 days after the last day for the appeal under the CUP. So it may be extended, which you've approved if he agrees to it. Otherwise, we'll be needing to close by the 15th of December. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Wells, were you going to make a comment? <coughs> yeah, so. Yep. Okay. Um, just as, as Mr. Wakefield just stated, He's not on the agenda because he has no official business. Um, the water committee is not on the agenda tonight because we have no official results. All we've done is discussed a schedule and did a, a, an, an overlay of what Stockwell Engineering presented at the water meeting a couple, couple weeks ago last month. So we will be on the agenda once we start digging into this, which will be the next meeting. But our first meeting, not to disappoint, we didn't, we didn't discuss any decisions that, that are to be made or recommendations that are to be brought forward to the council. All we did was a brief overview of what we talked about last month and then talk about kind of how we're gonna schedule this. That's it. That is why it's not on the agenda. I was in City Hall today and I said, I am gonna speak during visitors and timed items just to let you guys know that. So it wasn't that we weren't going to or we weren't thinking of it, that was the plan, to speak during visitors and timed, timed items since this is not, uh, there's no official results to, to present or discussions to present. Um, I'll let you know what we did other than the overview and, and talk about the, the um, uh, the, the schedule to come. We, uh, we discussed coming up with a mission statement and we discussed coming up with what is gonna be our first topic. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna be the person telling the group what they should talk about. I'm simply gonna help organize it. I want them to come up with the ideas themselves so that it is in fact coming from the residents and not myself or any staff or any other council member. This is a, this is a group made up of residents and I, and I want it to be um, perceived that way. Um, and I say residents, including we also have staff and then uh, Stockwell Engineer is there also to help us to provide information input on, on our current system. Um, I will say, I'll let the cat out of the bag and I haven't emailed the group tonight. Um, I, I, was, I was a little surprised in a pleasant way of our first topic. I'll let you know what it'll be. It's going to be uh, water conservation. That'll be our first discussion. That's what the, the most feedback I had was regarding water conservation. We have uh, obviously some other really good engaging conversations like water quantity and water quality and infrastructure and connecting to other sources if need be. But the first meeting, as it stands, we'll be talking about conservation and I'm, I'm excited. I've got a couple ideas. I've reached out to some, some speakers um, regarding that. We may have to change the day of our next meeting. I will, I will let them know it, to accommodate a guest speaker schedule. We may have to, and if we do, they'll be aware of that well in advance. Hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, at least four or five days in advance, we'll know. So shouldn't be a problem, but I'm excited. I think it's gonna be a great conversation, a great topic to come up with. And I, and, and I, I look forward to the ideas that the, the members of the group will bring forward regarding uh, some methods that we can do, not only to conserve water, but also to get the word out on how to conserve water. Because if, if, uh, if we were currently following practices like that, I don't think we would have ended up in the, 
in the boat that we ended up in this this last summer as far as uh, a water ban. But so I'm excited. I think it'll be a great a great first meeting. Thank you for that update. The the minutes are also on the city website as well as a link to YouTube for the water committee meeting. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. Any others? Good evening. Neil Thompson, 515 Nicholas, and Brandon here, 24-year resident. Um, I emailed a couple of the council members on my concern about cleaning the road from Sioux Boulevard out to the Six Mile Road in the winter time. Um, I presume that that's as far as the city will clean is to the Six Mile Road, but then my question also was who cleans from Six Mile Road to the Aeros Data Center where the Sioux Falls uh, cuts off because in the winter time uh, from Rice Street from Sioux Falls into that Aeros Data Center corner it's clean as a whistle and then the rest of the road from there going east into Brandon is just horrendous. Um, I think it's a yeah, simple I'm, act instead of, instead of getting a plow out there on the front of a pickup to use a road grader um, I did not get any response back from my email that I sent out but uh, I was wondering if it's in the budget, we could do a better job or it's what. It's not our it road. Gets, it, well, it's not. Is it our road? Part of it is up to. to Tyler, or, uh, Arbor Ridge Road is where I believe the county stops. Technically, the road's not ours. That's where we made the mutual agreement Correct. to take care of it. Yeah. And so everything, county everything county. west, basically everything west of the bluffs, yeah. I believe, is Minnehaha County. Yeah. Minnehaha County. So, okay, so well, like that I have to contact Minnehaha County. Yeah. To get some, because you know, okay, from the bluffs even to Errol's data center corner, it's horrendous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to, we agree. We agree. Yeah. Call City Hall and we can give you the, the name to, yeah. of the person. Of the contact? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And even from the bluffs into Brandon, that road is not maintained very well in the wintertime. It gets ruddy. It's just, it's terrible. And after 24 years traveling on it every five days a week, going in and out of Sioux Falls, I don't think it's really acceptable, but I'd like to see if there's something that the city could do about doing a better job of cleaning that. I, I, I apologize. I thought that, that, that you had been answered in the email, so I apologize. You had emailed me, so I'm sorry about yeah. that. Thank did, you. Just to clarify, did, did um, Raleigh, you said we have a mutual agreement to maintain out to where? Arbor Ridge. Arbor Ridge, okay. All right. Okay. All right, because I, I agree. I, I think there's always room for improvement. I think we could probably improve that stretch. I, I, I agree with you there. I yeah. think maybe maybe we can put a little more pressure on, on the cleaning crew or snowplow crew. Okay, I'd appreciate it. Thank yeah. you very much for your time. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thanks for coming. Back. No comment. No, I was just. I, I agree. It's bad. I don't know. If we'll have to look at it from both angles. Is is the answer? Um, focus on the cleaning efforts or is it more in prevention because what I see happening there it just drifts so bad across right because there, there's nothing blocking it there so I don't know if we look at the ditches and or preventative measures I don't know if it's not a snow fence but something like that just to prevent some of that it's the same when you come back from Valley to Brandon it just drifts so bad across the road that they, they get so bad so quickly that the plows can't keep up and it gets packed down and then they can't scrape off the ice and that's where you get the ruts and so preventative might be more of the solution than anything all right. Push the purple <laughs> button for me, please. Purple, purple button. Purple Got it. And name and address. Okay. Tracy Burkhart, and I live at 1916 West River Bluff Drive in Brandon. I um, wanted to address the you council members, uh, our city members specifically, on the quality of the water in Brandon. And my experience is since I've lived here since 1998. Um, I know we've got a quantity issue too, and there's some issues with that, but I, I want to specifically address the, the quality tonight, my concerns with that. Um, recently here in October, uh, I lost water pressure in my home and it was down to nothing, just dribbles. And I called a local company here first in town to ask them for uh, an opportunity to repair it, see what was going on. And they were about a week out, so I, I continued to search. And I actually ended up calling the people that made our water softener and pipestone. 
<clears throat> um, they're brand new water softener services, the name of them. But um, I asked them about the situation and what was decided is that it was actually uh, an issue with the um, resin inside the tank, which had turned to gel, causing the problem. Uh, they came out, replaced the resin. Um, because of the quality of water here, it's exactly what they stated, and the lack of quality uh, and the amount of chlorine in the water, it causes the pellets to disintegrate and gel earlier than they should. Um, I've had that for four years, that water softener. And their pellet estimation was 10 years for life of the pellets before they needed to be changed. Um, they put in a more expensive resin, uh, 10 cross-cut resin, to try and make it so that it would last longer. I had to pay more for that. Total bill here was 20768 for that service. Uh, the cost of the, the water here alone is not cheap. I mean, we, we pay quite a lot for Brandon water. But to have to have the, the softener salt, which I spend about 750 a year at my house in softener salt, so you take that times t almost 20 years, substantial cost to families. And there's a lot of young families in town. I feel like our water is unusable without a softener. Uh, I can run a dishwasher in one load if the softener's not working, and I can't see through the glasses hardly. They're so frosted over. Um, the countertops are always white, caked with white, um, from the magnesium and the calcium and the hard insoluble substances in the water. Uh, the trays in the refrigerator, I've replaced multiple fixtures in our home, uh, water fixtures for the same reasoning. Uh, it, it just seems like unreasonable cost to get water to your home for the price that we pay. And I guess what I would ask the, uh, the city council is to explore other methods of water source or better methods to create better water from the sources we have so that the cost can be reduced for families um, in maintenance of equipment and purchasing equipment. A uh, perfect example is my mother lives on the far east side of Sioux Falls and her water has no odor, has no color. She doesn't use a water softener. It's a drinkable. Um, I don't know why we can't attain the same level out here. Uh, she doesn't have, you know, insoluble material over a counter that needs to constantly be removed with acid etch. Uh, it just, it, it seems silly to me to have to go to the measures we do to have just good, decent drinking water to use. So I just want to make my opinion known as a citizen. So when we're looking at this and going forward that we put some effort into attaining really good quality water, preferably less expensive water as well. Because the, the associated cost of just not only having the water, but again, having to clean the water to make it usable is, is expensive for anybody. And if you take that times all the families in Brandon, just imagine the costs that are going through this town just to try and have good water here. Um, this gentleman did tell me that I was about the ninth person that he had done this with. And he said it was due to the recent dump of chlorine that Brandon put into the water that causes that. And he said they do heavy dumps at a time because they use free chlorine in their water rather than uh, the other agents that um, a lot of other cities use. And it creates havoc with the the softener system. So, like I say, that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to address that and hopefully you take that into account as you move forward with this water issue and solutions. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Tracy. And Tracy, I want to respond. Now, now you're going to find out what what a task we have in front of us when it comes to the water committee um, or water development committee. Um, first of all, your water softener bailed out on you after four years. I've been here. 11 now and mine just did the same thing I feel your pain my water softener backed up on me and would no longer work so it took a little longer but I, I'm not saying that's a, a good or bad thing I'm just saying I understand what you're saying because the same thing just happened to me this summer so um, cost real quick I don't want to get into this this is something we're going to go into deep discussions in, in with this group but cost there's uh, multiple studies out there uh, by other engineering firms that compare kind of a five state area here and our costs are actually uh, some of the better in in the list I think we're on the lower half of the list so our costs right now compared to others out there is is actually pretty good now I'm not saying we can't make it better and same same thing with the quality the quality of our water we pass all of our water tests our hardness is is average you know compared to the state of South Dakota does that mean it can't be better? That's not what I'm saying. Because I 100% I, I, I agree we could look into creating better quality water. But, but 
the, the caveat to that is what, what I started to say is this all, we can do everything you want to the water. We can remove absolutely everything out of that water, but it comes at a price. And the more we do, the more it costs. So this, you're going to find out that the, the, the problem with heading this group is trying to agree on something for the, for the rest of the 9,000 and something citizens in Brandon, trying to agree on what to do and keeping cost in mind, because we can do anything at a cost. And, and the, uh, it's, it's, it'll be interesting to see what the group comes up with. Um, again, I, I want to make sure you understand, I'm not saying that our quality of water can't be improved upon, or that our quantity of water can't be improved upon, or that the cost of the water can't be improved upon. I, I, hope, I hope that's not misleading by me saying that, that we're in the lower half of the, the group when it comes to costs. I'm not saying that we can't improve upon that. Just, just letting you know where we're at because we got to know where we're at to know what we can work with. So, but thanks for coming. And thank you for your time. Uh, one of the things the you know I'd, I'd encourage the committee to do would be some sort of survey, um, not just the committee members, but of, of the community and kind of what their additional water costs are that the, they view for most. Because because Tracy had one experience that is vastly different than my own. I think I buy two bags of softener every every three months and, and, and I've been and that's on a seven year old water softener. So I like to see kind of uh, an assessment of the community and what the averages are, what the extremes are. And then you can take that cost into account of, okay, we are proposing to make X changes. We think those changes will increase the standard water cost by 10%, 15%, but it's going to lower these additional costs that, that you know folks like Tracy are experiencing or what the average is out there so I agree and and I think what I would like to do once we present this information to the council like you say maybe we can survey the community because we're only you know approximately 15 voices out of 9,000 and something uh, I agree we need to take into account the the community uh, the costs of what we're planning on doing and I think it's a I think it's a great idea though yeah thank you anyone else all right thank you again thank you all of you for your interest um, now moving on to the second reading of ordinance 556 rezone property describes as lots one and two block one Heartland business park edition at 108 North Heritage Road from general business to light industrial I'll make a motion to approve a motion from Hausman, second by Jones, to approve the second reading of Ordinance 556. Discussion. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, <clears throat> And please state your name and your address, sir. Uh, my name is Thomas Thompson. And I live at 3609 Marston Manor Circle, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, I don't know if I was passed over. I'm here on behalf of Joker's Casino. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Well, yes. Let, let, me, let me take care of this, and then I will get back to you. Okay, okay. thank you. You just stay right there. Okay. I have a motion and a second to approve this. Any questions or discussion? If not, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Okay. Yes, you were on the list. I'm sorry, we didn't we didn't get you. Uh, well, we we I didn't brought want to one up. About, so. Yes, thank you. Um, actually, uh, I own Jokers and then Blinkies. I've been in Jokers here about 12 years. Uh, Blinkies for probably about 15. Uh, we did make a mistake serving a minor. One of my employees did. Uh, we're putting some steps into place. More TAM certification. Uh, the young lady that carted this gentleman, uh, young gentleman that come in. Uh, you know, the, the credentials he had uh, certainly were for a minor. You know, he had the vertical card, not the horizontal. And so we're, we're taking a few steps to prevent that and uh, uh, taping that information right on the counter. Uh, I'm thinking on the way over here, we need to start carding them. If they look like they're under 30 years old, you know, your grocery stores do that. And we may have to do that also. So uh, again, we did make a mistake. I'm here to acknowledge that. And uh, 
Uh, I do have uh, my casino manager here, Steve Reckenbach, and I would like him just to tell you what we are going to okay. do, sir. If I Again, my apologies. I did not uh, mean to well, skip over like you, sir. I didn't want thank to get you. left in the dust, thank so you. thank you. Thank you. We're basically doing what he said, TAM certification, uh, making sure we have the information and the tools to make sure it doesn't happen again. Got the driver's license to do copies. Um, we also have the driver's license book that also has out-of-state license on it because we do get Iowa, Minnesota people, and so forth. So hopefully it doesn't happen again. Do those other states distinguish minors like we do, you know, with the car? I'm not real sure. In this book, it just shows just the regular horizontal license. I don't know if they do or not. But some of these, you look at them, it takes a couple seconds to try to find the driver's or the birth date on them. They're not. Yeah. And we also have, we also now have the, uh, uh, the, the dates little okay. calendar that yeah. says yep. born on this date. Yeah. 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 So. Well, it sounds like you're doing the, the necessary steps. Yeah, unfortunately, it takes something like this to kind of kick you in gear. So. Okay. Well, thank you. Yes. Yes. And thank you again for coming. And I'm, again, my apologies for, I, I, I noticed you were on the list and then I, I went right over you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, resolution 19-17 in the golf course setting fees for the upcoming golfing season which I don't think the uh, the current golf season has ended because there are people still out playing this weekend. So did we get that change yeah, how we, change? well John had mentioned? Yeah. Okay. The, the oh. rates reflected, uh, reflect a 3% increase across the board except for youth and married couples and family. We combine those into one category and then we set those at the average of the golf courses that we compare to as requested. Okay. Uh, thank you for making that up. I have a motion from McInerney, second by Jones, to approve. How old do you have to be to be elderly? Yeah, or youth. Because I know elderly seniors is, are 60. Elderly is any person who is 80 years of age or older on January 1st of the golfing year. Okay, thank you. So you don't quite make it. I'm, I'm, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm at that senior, but yeah, so planning ahead. That's right. Got to get my fixed income in there. All right. With that being said, I have a motion from McInerney, second from Jones, to approve the rates. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Anything else? Golf course. And their annual forecast for Friday. I would encourage folks to get out and play. Last chance they may have, but hopefully not. But it's supposed to be beautiful. And then uh, I don't know if that's where you're going, but I think they have a customer appreciation Saturday. Uh, Saturday. <laughs> and they had their annual season pass holders. We had the banquet members. last Saturday um, with the association members. That went very well. Um, a thank you to all the associate, association members. They're, they are the lifeblood of, of the golf course. And as I've talked with Zane, and, and part of the reason I was pushing for the, the price changes for the youth and the family is you, you look around that room, you look around the course, you look around the, the season pass sales. Uh, I just don't see the youth golfers there. Um, it is it, that's it's not a Brandon issue. It's it's a it's a golf issue. Um, they're playing other sports. They're, they're choosing other activities. But it is some place I'd like to try and and grow because you know just getting that young golfer developing a lifetime member is just kind of really a, building a lifelong customer there. So mm -hmm. thank you. John, when, is the, when is the last official day? Uh, it's dependent on snowfall, so oh, okay. we change it every year based on uh, same based weather. And James' judgment call. Yep. yep. All right. Thank you. Um, police, anything? Anything? I have nothing there. All right. Very good. Park and Rec. We have change order number two, Aspen Park Construction Restroom Building. This was a change order for the electrical uh, connection to the new restroom concession building. The wire that's existing that they were going to use is too small, so they're going to have to excavate back to find the connection point to the 
larger wire, simply put. We didn't want to undersize the power to the new building. Motion from Fish, second from Hausman to approve change order number two, Aspen Park Concession Restroom Building. Questions or discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Then item 11C, we have a UTV quote. Devin wants to get his little... UTV, so he com he's coming in under budget. We appreciate that, Devin. And he looked at us several of them, thought this one would be the most appropriate and most uh, flexible because we can add um, attachments to it, correct? Okay. So I would make a motion to approve this, Mayor. Second. Motion from Fish, second by Jones, to approve the UTV purchase discussion. Not all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Park and Rec. Anything else? Yes. So I just wanted to give you an update. Uh, we had our meeting last week, and you know we've acquired that um, the Peterson land. It's about 32 acres. So we're going to start planning what we would like to do with that. But we're first going to put out a survey to the citizens to see what they feel is important, and that'll be going out in various ways: social media. Um, probably in the water bills. We haven't quite determined exactly how we're going to get it out, but we'll get it out to as many people as possible for their input. Our um, big concern is we want to get a second entrance on that south side. So we're working on how do we do that, how do you finance something like that. Uh, we have purchased the pool software, so Christine is going to be training on that. And so rather than having the patches on the towels, we'll have a... Um, system on the computer to manage that the pool. Um, we did have a report from the skating folks, the hockey folks, and they're skating on the ice. Oh, um, the trees that are there were moved over from Aspen, showed out from the baseball field, so they, it looks really nice over there. Um, Todd Stone told us they had 83 kids, and now they have 118. Oh, wow. So, um, other communities are wanting to rent ice time, and so that will provide some revenue for them. So they're really excited. They're going to have a big splash here at, at some point um, to celebrate that accomplishment. And that's a great um, collaboration between the public and the private sector. And it just goes to show that that can work really well. Uh, we are working on our association ag agreements. You know, all of the different associations have an agreement with the city, like who's responsible for what. We're going to try to standardize those and just make it a little less cumbersome and easier for Devin and his staff. So we're going to be working through that. We will bring in the associations to talk to them so that we can collaborate uh, on both sides of that. So that's a, something for this winter that we're working on. Um, y you know, the folks that are on this park advisory committee are really dedicated. They're really good. We're going to try to um, get some expertise from Dave Fisher. Dave was with the Sioux Falls Parks Department for many years, and he's retired. And so we're going to pick his brain and see if we can get some good thoughts from him. So we're working on that, too. So if anybody has any questions, just let me know. But we appreciate the support on the concession stand. That's going to be great. Okay. All right. Yes, thank you. Moving on, 12A, we have a letter requ of request from Marmon to support the production tra tax credit. I, I would make a motion to support that. I have a motion from Fish, second by Jones, to support the Marmon request. I assume they want what the city to send a letter to these people supporting what they have been doing, correct? Yep. Who, sorry, I think that's the, the details are important. Who are we sending a letter to and kind of what are, how are we constructing that? What it's a verbiage? Because I, I agree with, I mean, all the points they made here are perfectly valid, make a lot of sense, but 
I just want it to be like any other topic that we talk about. We need to understand both sides, right? Because there's obviously a good reason. Somebody has a, I don't know whether it's a good reason or not, but they have a reason they're making this proposal. This one's going to impact us more locally than most of the other mm -hmm. ones, but. We can draft a letter and then you can review it at the next council meeting before we send it to Mormon. I would suggest that. Do you want to table the motion? Sure. We will table Is there the a motion. sensitivity to timeliness on well, this? Because I don't know when there's, if there's an official vote coming up, if Congress folks need to have opinions in, or it, what value do we think our letter is going to have? It's, it's just, I mean, it's a political type thing in that environment, so it's, it's very sensitive. I don't want to mm -hmm. offend 40% of our constituents and... I don't see a, I, I don't see, I don't a, see date. a deadline. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But you know Congress is working on the tax bill. Yes. The House has passed its bill, Senate's working on theirs. Yep. I let's draft it and bring it up and we're table this. Legally we we had a motion second. Can we just decide to table it? Okay, thank you. Resolution twenty ten or twenty seventeen. Contingency. This is transferring money out of our funds out of the contingency fund. Uh, first one for weed control for supplies for $2,050. Forestry for $5,275. Dues to both Makita and South Dakota Municipal League for $500 and $110 respectively. You have any questions? I'll make a motion. Trying to clean things up. Right? Yeah. Trying to clean We had to take out five extra trees this year that we did not plan on taking out at about a thousand bucks a tree. So um, it's a valid transfer. Due to weather, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2017. I have a motion from Hausman, second from Wells, to approve resolution 2017, taking and transferring money from the contingency. Questions or discussion? If not, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, resolution 2117, transfer of funds. This transfers funds from uh, the even out or balance out the, the accounts at the end of the year. First transfers from the general fund to the Redwood Project in the amount of 386-425-81. If you remember, we originally planned to bond that project and last year when we did the budget, it was a much larger project at about $1.3 million for total reconstruction of Redwood from Split Rock to the bridge. It turned into more of an overlay project, so we, we are not bonding for that. We'll just take that out of the general fund. The second one is from the STIP funds to the Holly Main Project Fund. That's the project that we're working on and currently in design for uh, coming down by, started out as Casey's to the bridge. We've expanded that to include reconstruction of Dogwood and Main Avenue from Dogwood South to include new sanitary sewer. That's $100,000 that we've expended so far this year. Uh, and then transfers, the two other transfers, one from Park Street Special Assessment to the General Fund. Uh, that Park Street bond is paid for, so that is a balance transfer to the General Fund of the balance. Good. And then from the General Fund to Chestnut Middle, those, bo those bonds have been defeased as well, but there is still debt. Um, in the amount of $45,299.54 <coughs> that this general fund is subsidized. Uh, there are still special assessments on that project for parcels outside of the city limits. So when they come into the city limits and are, and are platted, we will collect those special assessments to offset that $45,000 transfer. Second. Motion from Fish, second Jones to Approve resolution 2117 on those transfers of funds. Questions or discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Next item, we have first reading of ordinance 558, supplemental appropriations. Oh, oh. You've got item E, social media. Um, I got I, no. D, first, oh, yeah, first got reading D, of D ordinance 558. 
558 is a supplemental appropriation for uh, items in this year's budget. Uh, one, libraries, $13,500. If you remember, the school district put in new carpet. They, they submitted, and we, we share maintenance costs with the school district on the library, and that is our share um, of the carpet. Community promotion, the, the purchase of the flags. Uh, community promotion, purchase of the Christmas lights. And then once again, the Holly Main project, the professional services that are being paid for by the STIP funds, all those were projects approved by the council prior to today. Okay. We'll make a motion to approve. First reading, ordinance 558. A motion from Housel and second by Wells to approve the first reading of ordinance 558 on supplemental appropriations. Discussions? If not, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Now we have. Yes, the flags are here, right here and they're yeah. available at City Hall for City Hall for thirty-one dollars and fifty cents. Thirty-one dollars fifty cents. We have a box over here today. Yep. All right. We have a discussion on social media. Um, I asked Brian to put this on the agenda because um, I don't really have a solution, but I do think it at least needs to be addressed by council um, how we want to handle our social media that we maintain. Do we address other social media that is out um, in the public? And you were going to see what other cities were doing? Best practices are the recommendations from other communities and experts that address, uh, that were actually at the National League of Cities, are do not address on other websites, uh, address those issues and provide information on our own website and our own Facebook page. Some of, the some of the top reasons for that opinion are, I can think of some, I just want to. Um, you know, that, that's just the recommendation I've got. They don't, they didn't say why, it's just everybody's recommendation. Yeah. Not any cities that I know of engage in conversations on websites. So if we um, feel that there is some misstatement of fact, floating out around we could just post the facts on our website correct that's the recommendation that's the recommendation okay um, it is it's such a tough topic and and sorry I'm not just jotted a few notes down as I, I, I found I was gone Thursday not all weekend but I found out this was on the agenda and it's always been one that's been at the top of my mind and I struggle with what the best answer is because to be honest what I struggled most with as, as a council member is that Oh, what I say here tonight, and I could talk for 30 minutes, and it might be viewed and heard by 50 to 100 people, you know, the members in the audience or people watching on YouTube or on Alliance. And then there might be one or two sentences in the local paper. So how do we best get all the information out there? You know, is it through social media? Because one comment on social media on one of our local sites can be read by 2,000 people. I just said that I can talk for 30 minutes as heard by 50 people. One comment is read by 2,000, 3,000 people. That comment can then be retweeted, whatever you call it, um, by another 5,000 people. <laughs> Social media and some of those websites, they can be a very good thing. They can be valuable feedback for people like us if they're done in a good manner. In a good manner would be that you know, they're asking questions that we didn't think of. You know, that can be a positive result. There can be credible challenge as a result of it. You know, it's, it's a wider spread of opinions and feedback because the only feedback that I can get is if somebody emails me directly, which I get very limited of, to be honest. Somebody could call me directly, which I get even less of. So I don't get a lot of feedback on any of the comments that I make. I'm not on, so I'm not on Facebook. I don't read the comments. My wife has shown me a few. She's concerned about it. I maybe see one out of every 200. Um, and kind of what I've seen lately is that it, it, it can turn into a bad thing. You know, it can turn into a form with misleading information, misconstrued facts. You know, this, this kind of leads to, it leads to mistrust. It, meets, it leads to slow response to issues. Now we're slower to respond to issues because we're worried about, about what's going to be posted out there. That in turn, you know, can lead fear to act, which could end up costing the citizens at the end of the day more money higher fees because we haven't acted because we're fearful of what's happening out on social media. I, for one, and I'm not going to let that happen. Um, 
I don't know what the best solution is. I don't know what the long-term solution is. I think we need to figure it out, figure out what we want to do about it. In the short term, what I will say is what I'd like to see happen. I've asked for, and what I'd like to see, that one of the first things come out of the Water Committee is that we put, publish a statement of facts, a statement of facts about what is actually happening, a statement of facts about what our water test results are, a statement of facts about what total desalt solids are, a statement of facts about how we got here in the first place. Why did the water ban have to take place? The reason it'll be so valuable coming out of this water committee because that's not coming from the city, it's not coming from an engineer, it's not coming from a citizen, it's coming from an agreed upon conglomeration of all those resources. And then somebody can't just push back and say, no, they've got a hidden agenda and that's what we're gonna push on, or no, they're trying to get some bias. No, it's a committee of all those. Once they publish a statement of facts as a result of that, that can be viewed and, and relied upon. So that's a, again, that's a very short-term solution. That's one topic. We do need to address this at a broader level. And we've been talking about for years. I don't know what the best answer is. I don't want the city to have to invest resources and respond to every single comment out there by going and researching and publishing what we view the facts are, because then we're going to publish that, and somebody's going to go out there and post five or six additional messages to try and contradict that. And it's just this it's it's circle and this perpetual en endless activity. So. I, I will make the commitment that we'll continue to understand and, and understand what we should do on the social media agenda. But, right. Well, thank you, John. Um, I agree with Brian. Uh, I don't think we should address anything on social media, make comments on anything um, as a city and abroad. Yes, we should be more visible on Facebook. That seems to be, Brandon's a younger community and a very active community on Facebook. Um, so I, we, I had a long talk with him today and I'm on Facebook, Lot, lots of people are on Facebook, so I think we need to have more of a presence on Facebook. Need to update the community on what's going on more than probably what, what we are now. I agree with John. Um, when things are said on Facebook, I'm not gonna respond. I, I can't say for anybody else, but I'm not gonna respond. Plus, I don't even see it, to be honest with you. I don't belong to any of those groups that is being talked about. However, I'm told about them and for that fact, I keep my mouth shut because first of all, I'm not part of that group and I'm not gonna go and respond to something that's negative, nor am I gonna respond to mistruths. So this is where people need to come talk. This is where people need to come face us at the podium and Mr. Wakefield is very good about that, but face us at the podium and come talk to us. Come call me, email us, that's what we're here for but do it in a constructive way. I guess that's what I ask. And, but I do believe that we should be more visible on Facebook as a city, so that's my thoughts. I, I agree with that. I was in City Hall today. Um, I don't belong to the, the Facebook group that a lot of this is coming from. Um, I've been told about them, and so I have gone to the site and looked at it, I think twice now. And trust me when I say that, <laughs> There is a lot of information on there that's absolutely not true. And so I came into City Hall and I said, so, you know, this person said this and that and on and on. Have they ever come to you and talked to you about this? Have they asked you, is this true? Has this person, you know, brought this issue up with anyone in City Hall? You know what the answer was? No, nope. nope, never, never saw this person. So I, I guess part of the solution, and I stress part of the solution, is if you have a concern come talk to someone at City Hall about it or come talk to a council member about it. Just like John said, I, I receive very few emails. So I know folks at City Hall are very willing to discuss some of these issues because there's a lot of people that are misled and it's destroying the community and it's sad. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely sad. Um, you definitely touched on, I guess, my main point is in my concern and why I think we do need to address is because I see people on there that I know that don't even come to me and ask me, you know, I live down the street from them. We know them. They don't pick up the phone and call me. They don't ask me. They don't say, okay, what's really going on? And they're getting wrapped up in a very intelligent people. Everybody is on there that, that they want to be involved. They, they care about their water. They care about the city. 
the best way to get answers is to call, is to do further research. I, my biggest fear is that everybody's getting so worked up and, and they don't need to be, you know? And maybe and I think a lot of that, that is on us. We need to do a better job communicating. So I kind of view this, uh, you know, this statement of facts from the water communities as, as one of our first steps and endeavors into that, you know, to put people's minds at ease, not put them at ease falsely, but to actually display the facts because at the end of the day, the facts will help ease a lot of the concern out there. Well, isn't that the reason that we formed the water committee so that they could go to work on some of these things? We got to give them some time. I mean, guy, you guys have had one meeting, so let's just give them some time. That that was the whole reason we formed it, so the citizens could have input. Is my understanding correct? And 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 like I mentioned to the gentleman that spoke earlier about quality, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna hammer those topics hard because because I think those are great topics, you know. Um, but we have to do it in a stepwise manner. We just haven't gotten there yet. We've, we've had one meeting and, uh, you know, again, all we discussed was, was future schedule and um, uh, an overview. So um, I, I agree, John, a statement of facts from the water committee. I will add that to our, our mentality and we'll try and come up with that. I think it's a great idea. Um, you know, for me, uh, bottom line is I've lived all over. I was a commercial pilot before I uh, went into the field of medicine and I've lived all over. I've lived in uh, quite a few states and quite a few cities. And all I can tell you is the city of Brandon is the nicest place I've ever lived. I've lived on the East Coast. I've lived in the Midwest. I've lived in the South. And our parks community, you know, everything that we have here in this city is, it's unbelievable. It's amazing. Now, I'm not saying we can't improve on it because we can improve on, uh, I think Im improvement should be a, a continual discussion, you know, especially with the, water, with the water committee. But bottom line for me is I've lived all over. I've, I've seen other communities, other cities. I have a lot to compare this city to. And this city is, it, I tell you, for people that haven't lived elsewhere, it, it's this city, this town of Brandon is, it's, uh, it's unbelievable that some of the resources that we have the community the people in this town is it's great I don't I, I don't know I can't put it into words I'm sorry but it but it is so one of the things that hurt me the most uh, about a recent post um, or comment excuse me was someone said that they heard three people were looking to leave Brandon selling their house in the spring that hurts um, absolutely not my intent nor any of the intent of the council this did is they our say it was for water reasons yes, did they specifically say it's for water reasons did those people selling their house specifically say it's for water reasons why they're moving did they specifically say that in the post I'm not going to make a comment without looking at the post specifically okay, so you don't know it was commented on, but Again. can you please let me finish? <clears throat> it really upset me that someone would say that. I don't know their reasons specifically. I didn't talk to the people, but it bothers me because our town is an amazing town, like Mr. Wells said. I enjoy living in this town. I moved from Harrisburg to Brandon on purpose. We have a little bit of egg in our face right now with the water issue and I understand that and we're working towards the solution. My concern has been the lack of transparency as you're all aware and social media has been one of the few ways that we've been able to try to push to get information. It sucks that we're in that position. I don't want to be in that position but tonight is a prime example. We heard from our legal counsel tonight that there is no signed amendment three to the purchase of the Nelson land. Mr. Mayor was on record saying that he signed that agreement. I've asked for that information multiple times and we can't get the information factual to the point where I asked for an overabundance of information, emails, those sorts of things. I didn't want to be put in that position. I hate being in that spot. I want to work with you as much as you don't believe me, but I want to make this move forward and I got to response which is by law okay that it's gonna cost six hundred and eighty dollars it sucks I get it I if it's a burden to the city I will pay that burden 
we will make sure that the burden is paid. I'm not going to ask the city to take a burden for fact-finding information, but those facts are things that the residents would like to see. And why is social media blown up so much? Honestly, a lot of it is the lack of transparency. It's things like there's a signed amendment three, there's not, there, we're buying this land, we're not. I mean, it, it's, we can all communicate better. I have several residents that have reached out to me because they're not getting emails responded um, from the council members, which is unfortunate. I'm not gonna go into details. But the other thing that honestly is disheartening to me is the overall personality and behaviors that have happened. I know that I'm ruffling feathers, but I'm doing my best to remain as polite and respectful as I can, whether you feel that way or not. But there's been several instances where obviously I don't get along with other people and it gets very heated. And that happened in the committee meeting and Mr. Wells called me out on something and I didn't appreciate it, to be honest. I'm trying to be respectful. I know that you're trying to be respectful, but we need to figure out a way to work together. And this ain't cutting it. And I don't know what, what your all thoughts are, and I'm not gonna waste anyone else's time, but we need to put this all aside. We need to figure it out and move on. And let's just be respectful. That's all I have. All right. So in response to that, uh, you know, communication. If you email me and don't get a, a, me a message back, I've, I've said it before, let me know. I've never not responded. As far as communication goes, I, I, want, I want to be very clear. I try and, and get any information that is requested of me. Emailed you just the other day, Mr. Wells, uh, all the council members about the um, purchase of the claims uh, today, asking that that be uh, clarified. And then I also asked about the uh, amendment this afternoon so okay that'll but, come up on amendment five so but that is a legal discussion okay that we have to consult a lawyer for i don't have the answer within an hour and sometimes not even a day or two okay i was in city hall today discussing that matter i spent an hour and a half in city hall discussing that matter so that i can give you an answer okay are we clear and do you understand why people are upset because the misleading information that you're putting out there is costing everybody in this room, every person in this, in this community, money, lots of money. Digging up all of this information and, and consulting legal on all of these instances that someone's saying that we're wrong, when in fact we're not wrong, is costing a lot of money. And it's about time it stops. Okay. I'm yeah. all for moving yep. forward and keeping an open mind. But I do, I can't tolerate, I, I just can't tolerate that. I, I, I don't, okay. I don't agree with it. We're moving on. moving on. We're moving on. And I think Lisa has responded numerous times to the, the clarity in that. Yep. All right. First reading ordinance 559. Zoning ordinance changes. So we have a couple plan developments in our community they're called pds it's a zone sunrise estates and hedgewood of states and this was some house cleaning items that we needed to move forward with originally some residents in hedgewood estates had asked that they could put up a sign just identifying the age at which people are allowed to live there and since we don't control the age at which people can live in housing we needed to amend their language in the ordinance for the PD for Hedgewood Estates. And then in doing so, we also revised some language in Sunrise Estates just to clean some of that up. That was on pages 56, 56 through 58. And then we also included some revisions to our double frontage discussion, which has been lengthy. Uh, to allow an accessory structure in what would be considered the double frontage of a property that has two front yards, which is defined by the front lot line being uh, from the front of the house to the right of way, which we have 
numerous homes in the city of Brandon that have double frontages. Um, in order for us to allow an accessory structure, we had to change and add some definition language and then actually loosen what we previously had, which was that we did not allow accessory structures in the double frontage of a two frontage lot, if you will. <laughs> yeah, I'll, However, we have, yeah, so I'm double, there are instances. An example. A double yeah, there are, there, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Sioux, Sioux Boulevard, Sioux Boulevard and, and yeah. uh, is it Oak Ridge? No. No. River Oak. River Oak, thank you. There's several houses there that have, well, all of them along Sioux are double frontages, and several of them have accessory structures. There are instances where the double frontage can actually flip within a lot. There's two or three lots on Augusta and Country Club where the property owners have actually purchased the second lot behind them. And so now they technically have a double frontage. The lots next to them on Augusta have a front lot, front yard, a standard front yard with a property behind them. So they have two lots between two right of ways. So in effect, you do have a rear yard. In that case, you are allowed an accessory structure if you have an actual rear yard within five feet of your side yard and your rear yard lot line. In the case of the Augusta property at Country Club, if we were to allow an accessory structure, let me clarify, the language in the ordinance states that you can have an accessory structure in your second frontage as long as you stay outside of the setback. Okay, so if we were allow to allow these individuals that have double frontages where their rear yard may actually be adjacent to somebody with a front yard, they could, in, they could affect put a storage shed in their double frontage, but it would actually be right next to somebody. Somebody's driveway, front, front yard, front yard front door. So, and, and we, I had to have a picture drawn. Yeah. So that was part of the discussion. So I'm, I'm trying to just kind of fill you in on what would happen if we allowed an accessory structure similar to in a rear yard in the case of a double frontage. So what we've compromised, if you will, in numerous uh, points of discussion, planning and zoning, came up with the recommendation that we allow an accessory structure in what would be considered the rear yard of a double frontage lot, just not within the setback. Mm -hmm. it was, it's okay, been quite so, a long Okay, so planning discussion. and zoning has spent hours on this. Yeah. Months so, on this. Yeah, they have worked really hard on this. Since before August. <laughs> Did you say some about age? age for the Hedgewood. It's 55 or older, and they had requested quite a while ago that they. Yeah. yeah. Was that late, out here late, somewhere? Late in the street. No. no. Late in the street. <laughs> it's the sign. We, we, we don't dictate how old people. That's what I was worried about. Yeah. I was looking for it down here, and the, I didn't even know a developer could do it's that. A yeah. yeah. It's part of a. It's, a it's, it's part of a housing <laughs> agreement. Housing. They received HUD funding. No. no they no. received HUD funding. Yes. For their project, which has some age requirements on it, restrictions. Mm -hmm. So they want to advertise that. The only thing that we're changing on there is allowing them to put a sign up of two square feet, that would say age 55 and older. Yeah. That's it. And yes. when that originally came in front of the council, that's exactly what we did too. We went. Yeah. So there's been a ton of discussion yep. on, and it was all revolving around a sign yes. and what we could post. Okay. So I have a motion from Jones and a second from Fish to approve first reading of Ordinance 559. Um, I will go with it, but then I'm going to give it Paul later so I can get it all straight in my head about that. You mean, you mean my drawing wasn't good enough? My explanation wasn't good enough? No. <laughs> <laughs> good. 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 I just want to make sure that. I don't want to get in that. That was six months worth of yeah. discussion. Yeah, I, I realize that. I, I know you guys have been discussing, or planning has only been discussing it a long time, but I just have to get it right. Um, I don't want to get too far. Into just make sure that sign in no way can be construed in any argument whatsoever that 55 is yeah. interpreted as a speed limit. <laughs> I'm yeah, serious. Yeah, you're, you're true it's there. Small. Yeah, it's up one foot by one. I don't remember yeah. Somebody okay. Somebody has a friend job and pointing fingers say they're 55. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I never thought about that. With that being said, I have a motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Anything else administrative? I did have a question on the liquor license where we're at with the uh, I know last we talked we were talking about getting some 
contacted an individual who works in the retail liquor business, buying and selling properties. He is doing a brief study for us. I have not heard back from him yet, but I would anticipate hopefully something before the next meeting. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, that'd yep. be good. Okay. Item 13, streets. Anything in streets? Uh, where's all it? No, he's shaking his head no. All right. There, so I guess not. Up to item 14, water and sewer, please. Good evening. Brent Anderson with Stockwell Engineers. Um, the first item is the change order number five for the wastewater treatment uh, lift station. Uh, this is the fifth and final change order and it'll come shortly. The final pay app will come shortly after this. So we recommend approval. Okay, we've had a question about that from the from sure. concerned citizens also. Um, I'll let you take over. We, yeah, we talked about this Thursday night. So the the natural gas heater. Correct. You guys are paying for it. I understand our firm will be participating in paying for it. Yes. You understand that to be correct? Yes, so, okay. I do. I just want to make sure that that's... Okay. Yes, so that's correct. That that's okay. All that's right. And, and the reason it's included in the change order is because then it will be covered by the warranty provided by Journey Group. Right, so run it through the contract and then it's locked into the one, and then the warranty. Yeah. Okay. So with that in mind, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion from Wells, second by Hausman to approve change order number five, Big Sioux Lift Station project. Questions or discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Then we have Gil Haugen construction pay app number two for the water treatment plant HMO system. Correct, this pay application number two for the HMO feed system that was installed. Um, it's substantially complete. We're working on some um, final chain or some final punch list items and repair items. So we recommend approval for payment for this. Paul, you're okay with that? Too many. Too many mics up. Okay. Yes. Oh. All right. <laughs> She's checking. You're way down there. Okay, motion to approve. Motion from well, second by Jones to approve pay app number two for the water treatment plant HMO system. Discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Anything else? Water sewer. Thank you. Anything else before council? I just want to make 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 sure we're clear right now the meeting as is as scheduled the next water development group meeting is as scheduled if we need to accommodate a speaker's schedule we may have to change it by a day but we'll know well in advance of that so when uh, is that tuesday next tuesday um next what's tuesday. i don't have the date in front of me next the 28th yeah yeah and and the public is welcome at those meetings i i encourage the public to show up um all is invited so and I, I don't mean to sound like I'm, I'm getting heated about this. I apologize if I do. I just, I, I want to move forward with an open mind, so. All right. Are those going on YouTube? Are we yeah, recording those? Yep. Cool. All right. With that being said. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Okay. Motion for Jones, second for Haslund for adjournment. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. All of you in the audience, please have a wonderful Thanksgiving. <laughs>